Damon Melch with Extreme Bait Tanks. Today we are in Monticello, Arkansas. Arkansas. Uh, with uh, Jeremy Coe. You, and would, you would think we were in the desert. It's well, hot. It is a little warm. <laughs> Jeremy did, helped, gave us a tour of the uh, facility here to tell us how boats are made. But uh, thanks for the tour. Yes, thank y'all for coming. We're glad and, to have you. Got to see it at ICAST, so that was good. Yep. Married. I'm married now. Yeah. yeah moved. Moved. moved I'm, a, I'm a Cajun now. I moved to Louisiana. How many kids? None. I got, oh, okay. I got two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> got two dogs and a boat and a wife. That's I good. But I'm still a Kentucky boy. You know, All right. Good from deal. Lake Cumberland right next to you. So yep. I, I still can't leave those roots. But. but hey, thanks for the invitation. It's very interesting to see how boats are made because you don't order. You, you basically everything everything is made from scratch yeah yeah anything aluminum we hand make out here our guys do an awesome job we probably got some of the best welders in the business yeah comes awesome. in on a roll of aluminum and comes out turned in boat. yeah so, it's so cool. give me just i've got the videos i'm going to put on this but uh just give us a little recap of, of step by step yeah so you said you got the you get the rule rolls of aluminum different gauges yeah. for different boats different parts yeah so what Take you saw part. out there was a 125 gauge aluminum which is the majority of our boats cap catfish boats, bass boats, whatever. And then you saw the tread plate, yep. which is our floors. Um, so all of that comes in on one big roll. Our plasma machines cut everything, cut them into parts. And you saw all those guys welding them little parts together, welding the lids. I mean, you name it, anything has to get bent, welded. Uh, gets done right out there at the beginning. The, the big holes get bent on our big press. Yep. And uh, basically from there, that's just like a big giant puzzle is all this. So yep. we got guys that put them, put the holes together, weld the transom on, then you go to the, uh, the, the ribs inside, the transverse ribs. And uh, that's where the real fun starts. Them guys have to start putting the decks on, the fuel tanks in, like you saw, mm -hmm. the big aluminum tanks and the floor risers in. And it's just, like I said, it's just one big giant puzzle. So it's amazing that they can remember sure. each boat and what part. And then from there, you go, they sand it down so they can paint it. Yeah, yeah, it gets a good sand, gets a really good bath. Right. Uh, that way the paint sticks, get your line X, your paint, whether that's camo, shiny, whatever. Uh, it gets it at the very end and um, gets baked, goes right back out. And then that's where the finished process starts. Okay, so a couple questions. So anyone watching this, I'm thinking as a consumer, can I pick my color? You sure can. Yeah. So yeah. when they when they order boats, that's one of the things. So you do customization. You, we do customization. Okay. I mean, uh, for all the way down to the color of the splatter inside the boat. You wow. Know, black. Uh, we've even got guys doing the orange and the green amp that matches their amp package. Inside. I see. So you can really do whatever you want. So for someone watching this, they see all these boats sitting out here in all these halls, but yet the weight uh it's pretty significant right now yeah w why is that yeah so you have lots of customers that have ordered boats mm -hmm. especially through this this chaos that we've right. had in the fishing called, industry called covid yeah called covid yeah <laughs> so you know the demand is really really high so there's a, a waiting list and then once these boats get started um you know it doesn't technically take that long if they went from start to finish mm -hmm. and they were the only boat in line but but when you have big boats in line and they get urethane paint it takes longer so it slows down the camouflage boat or it slows down a, just a regular you know od green boat or something so there's a lot of factors that go into that and then uh right now part shortages yeah, are crazy it's a, so, that's across the country you, you can't get fiberglass you can't get pumps all the way down to little wiring connectors well i'm gonna say well get. what we've discovered same thing with bait tanks i mean you yeah. you could have everything you need for a bait tank except that one piece yeah and guess what you it's, don't have a bait tank it sits out there till it gets one piece yeah yeah so yeah so, you so you're running that. into that obviously yeah yeah so there that that has definitely hurt our wait times and the outboard engines are just they're like gold. They're hard to find. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's just a big, like the whole circle's broken and we're just going week to week. Yeah. One, one week they call us and say, oh, we can't get you pumps. So we've I lost mean, that hurdle. And, and nobody has a crystal ball on this stuff, but yeah. if you did, what would you predict as the future? I mean, do you see this lasting long term? Is it short term? Just don't know? I think a lot of us, we just don't know, you know. Uh, everybody really nobody expected this to even begin with mm -hmm. when corona started and uh and you were at icast you know yeah. both uh, last week so it's been encouraging uh, i really think it is kind of a, a boost to the fishing world oh is, no doubt which i would have never seen at my time but it was kind of a dying breed you know everybody was getting away from the mm -hmm. outdoors 
And so this really stimulated the outdoor world, which I think is great, even though it's kind of been a- So you've got that le extra demand layered onto yeah. what was already a demand. Yeah, you've got more people now mm -hmm. in the outdoor space. And so that's that's awesome, but it also has its challenges. Um, so I definitely think it'll be a, a boost for many years yeah. to come as people keep staying out in the outdoors. So totally never knew agree. it existed. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think it'll slow down eventually, you know, everything, it, it all. Yeah, yeah dips and dips and goes back up so um i hope it don't end anytime soon yeah i don't i don't think industry, i don't think so. i think i think when people that are new to the bit to the industry get a taste for it yeah that's just going to increase the number of people out there you know wetting the line yeah. and getting boats so. yeah yeah so. well jeremy again thank you for the tour been very educational yes, and yes. uh Looking forward to uh, a long future with it. Yes, with, uh, I'm excited. We've dealt a lot in the past yes, sir. Uh, since you got on board with Extreme through other other things. Right. And, uh, can we let the cat out of the bag what we're working on? It's a possibility. Well, but we're still in the. We process. can always edit it if we don't like it. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> so right now we did a video a couple uh, uh, been quite a while ago. Last fall, I think we had our MV John series, which is mm -hmm. just a big John boat. Yep. And you can do really whatever you want with it and a lot of the cat fishermen like all the big space in the inside so we pushed the console all the way forward uh, on the front deck almost and the mvs don't have a lot of room so it's hard to get plumbing and fuel tanks and uh so reached out to damon you got the big live well right. and it would work out perfectly as an insert into a john boat because um, that's a good price point boat you're not spending 80 grand right. on a catfish boat and uh, you can take your live well out. You want to take the family, you leave it back in, and it's just a really good option for our John boat. So part of the cat out of the bag is, um, you know, we've always had the live wells and we've had the bait tanks, and they've each served their individual purposes. But we know one of the benefits of the bait tank is there's no corners. Yeah. The live wells, we didn't have to worry about that because you're putting in big, big catfish. Big catfish. Sure. So what we're actually looking at designing for Sea Arc is a combo unit that's removable that serves both purposes. Yeah. So we're at the very, very beginning stages of that. And uh, that's that's one of the reasons we're here to sort of get a feel for how you operate and eventually exactly how that's gonna fit into that yeah. boat. Yeah, so we're excited. And I think we're gonna put it together one way or the other. It's just, just matter it's when. Get, getting the yep. brains together and designing it. So. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for yeah. the invitation. For Looking coming. forward to it's it. Always. And as always, if you have any questions about CARC, Jeremy Coe, is a very good contact for that and i'll put his contact information there yeah and of course for extreme uh just reach out we'll be happy to answer any questions yeah and until then we hope you have an extreme day yes